Hi everybody, uh, we're here today with Pam Root, one of our gallery artists, and um, Pam, you know, has is a very interesting artist in that she is multi-talented. She does both incredible photography and also does amazing watercolors. So what we want to do, Pam, is just get your take. Uh, by the way, welcome to Thank the gallery. Thank you. Uh, we want to get your take on what it's like to be both a photographer and a watercolorist at the same time. Oh, that's a good question, Pat. Um, the two disciplines complement each other. And um, when I started shooting for others with photography, at the same time I began my career as a watercolorist. So um, I learned um, from the images that I took with, with my camera and then relayed them to the watercolor. Oh, that's fascinating. Behind I see that incredible picture of uh, the white horses down there stampeding out of the water. But I notice also that uh, above it, you've got this really beautiful watercolor that you did, which is actually of a very similar subject. So uh, did actually traveling down to the south of France um, help to uh, clarify your idea the type of watercolor that you wanted to do? I had painted the wild horses of Camarge before I had visited them and I mainly used it out of my imagination and that was fine but afterwards it was a wonderful experience and I got to really the images and the details of the horses and their power and strength um, stayed with me so then I was able to come back and not only see my images that my camera took, but also um, I could put that same feeling into my paintings. In other words, you supply the emotional content of the watercolor Correct. on your own personal Correct. experience of having been down there and interacted with them and seen them and you know getting Correct. to see them up close and personal. And with, with photography, you, you get the whole composition, but you can change it later. You can take things out, and with painting, you pretty much um, commit yourself to uh, your idea of the image and create the mood rather than um, manipulating the mood. Right, well like also with photography you can take um, you know 30 different shots from different uh, perspectives and with different Correct. lighting and, and yes. with different lenses and all that sort yes. of thing but once you started uh, on a watercolor, especially if it's on rice paper, you're pretty much committed, is that correct? Y you are. With rice paper, it's more of a spontaneous art that you, you have to go with the flow. You commit yourself and what comes out, um, that's what you're going to have. And if you're painting on canvas or on watercolor paper, you can change it just like you can with photography, but um, you do, you do try to find, set the scene. Right, in other words, you want the structures. You pretty much decided on that beforehand. You do. Absolutely. Well, listen, Pam, thank you so much for coming in. It's been great talking to oh, you. Oh, it's and wonderful. Where's your next trip? Um, I'm headed to Page, Arizona to visit Slot Canyons and photograph the rock formations, and I'm very excited about that. Oh my gosh, that sounds incredible. We can't wait to see what you're gonna come back with. I bet it's gonna be fantastic. Oh, thank you, Pat. All right, well, thanks for coming in. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Thanks. Take care.